It's September 12th, 2023, and these are your headlines. It's day six in the Texas Senate's impeachment trial of Attorney General Ken Paxton. When we caught up yesterday, we talked about some of the whistleblowers that came forward in their refusal to investigate the FBI. But the Senate continued to meet until 7 p.m. before getting into what we've seen so far today. You need to know about this latest revelation. The prosecution brought forward Greg Cox, who formerly worked for the Travis County District Attorney's Office. Cox testified that while in that position, he outlined a series of possible crimes that Paxton may have committed, including bribery, abuse of office, and conspiracy. Ultimately, none of these charges were brought against Paxton, despite the fact that, as the old adage goes, you could indict a ham sandwich. But even the Democrat-led Travis County District Attorney decided not to pursue it. On cross-examination, Tony Busby, one of Paxton's defense lawyers, asked Cox about his allegations. Cox said there was no way he would ever want to be associated or affiliated with the kind of criminal conduct that he was alleging. That's when the bombshell dropped. You see, after drafting a memo in the Travis County DA's office accusing Paxton of criminal activity, Greg Cox went on just several months later to apply for a job in Paxton's office using a letter of recommendation from the Democrat DA herself, Margaret Moore. Let it sink in, Tony Busby said. You wrote this silly memo where you talked about potential violations of law, and months later, you applied to work at the AG's office, didn't you? Greg Cox replied, that is correct. The moment is just one of many in which Paxton's defense team has revealed weaknesses in the prosecution's own witnesses. Last week, one whistleblower admitted to having no evidence when reporting Paxton to the FBI. We've talked about that before. Another said he made claims to the House investigators that he did not know the veracity of. Hey, let them figure it out. I don't know if it's true or not. Today's proceedings, in contrast to previous days, got off to a late start. The first witness of the day today was Brandon Kamick, an outside lawyer hired by Paxton to look into potential wrongdoing against real estate developer Nate Paul, uh, in part uh, wrongdoing by the FBI. Kamick's name has been mentioned by many of the so-called whistleblowers in their testimony before. Throughout the trial, as many of them expressed their displeasure at Kamek's hiring outside of what they have characterized as the normal approval process. Despite the fact that Ken Paxton is the elected attorney general and has the authority to do so. He has maintained that he's in charge. Even some of the witnesses have conceded that he had the legal authority to hire him, even though they didn't all sign off on the hiring. So Kamek was hired by Paxton because those employees, as we discussed yesterday, either slow walked the case or flat out refused to investigate the FBI. Again, in part because of the Senate's late start today, as we record this, that testimony is still going on inside the Capitol. They just started cross-examination now. They'll go about uh, until 7 p.m. tonight again, and we'll have more testimony tomorrow and then we are indeed nearing the end. It's hard to believe, I know, as both sides are running out of their allotted time. Senators will soon be making their decision as to whether or not Paxton is permanently removed from office. During a speech at an event in Michigan, former Fox News host Tucker Carlson blasted Texas Governor Greg Abbott for failing to properly utilize the National Guard to secure the southern border. While National Guard troops have been used as part of Operation Lone Star, they have primarily helped Border Patrol process illegal aliens. Carlson said anything aside from deploying the Guard to stop the invasion is not a meaningful solution. The conservative commentator told the crowd that he has attempted to convince Abbott to deploy the National Guard. Carlson said he suggested the deployment to Abbott three times, including once in private at a cocktail party in Dallas a year ago. He said Abbott told him it's, quote, more complicated than just sending the National Guard to seal the border. Carlson challenged that, saying it's not that complicated to repel the person trying to break into my house. Tucker went on to accuse Abbott of being a liar, 
Certainly, he's not the only one that has grown frustrated over the lack of substantial action by the state of Texas to stop the invasion at the southern border. The Republican Party of Texas, for example, has made it a priority for the state to use its constitutional power to do so, and yet there has been hesitancy from the governor. Sure, there's been busing of illegal aliens to sanctuary cities across the country. There is, of course, the thousand foot border buoy barrier, but there hasn't been as of yet the kind of sweeping action that border security advocates have been pleading for for years now as millions continue to pour across the border into Texas over the last few years. On the other hand, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is complaining about Texas Governor Greg Abbott's illegal alien busing program, calling him a, quote, madman. Governor Abbott's office, by the way, did not respond to our request for comment. Lastly, Dallas Independent School District has confirmed that they will be implementing a sex education curriculum from an organization that promotes cross-sex hormone usage to high schoolers. A recent investigation exposed DISD's expansive communications regarding gender identity and sex education. Since then, the district has confirmed to both the Dallas Express and Texas Scorecard that they have adopted an after-school program called Positive Prevention Plus. As part of their educational curriculum, they include a pride guide to STIs, which instructs young teenagers on how to hide their breasts and other genitalia to look more like the opposite sex. Both chest binding and tucking have been known to cause numerous health problems, including fractured ribs, damaged blood vessels, and urinary tract infections. That's just part of the shocking curriculum. The full story is at texasscorecard.com. Brady Gray of Texas Family Project says schools have no role or responsibility in exposing kids to sexual content at any level or age and that parents should take the reins. For more news of the day, follow me on X at bwaltons or go to texasscorecard.com. No ads, no paywalls, no government grants, and no corporate masters. Just real news for real Texans. This is Texas Scorecard.